Hello and welcome to episode number 151, where I speak with Vedia J. Arijan of Kerala Ayurveda Academy about diabetes and how Ayurveda explains it's not just a single disease, but a complex syndrome. Dr. J. talks about the Ayurvedic management of diabetes and gives lots of Ayurvedic tips and home remedies for diabetes. So please stay tuned to learn a lot of valuable information here. Hello and welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being, preventing disease in the body and mind so that you can thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. I will also discuss topics like yoga, which is the sister science of Ayurveda, health and wellness, nutrition, fitness, and mindfulness practices, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to mother nature, and to help you to connect to each other. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend that you start by listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. Now, if you like the content, please subscribe to the show so the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other, and I'd love for you to join me over at the Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now, here's the show. Today's episode is sponsored by Kerala Ayurveda Academy. Are you interested in deepening your study of Ayurveda? Now, more than ever, the world needs people like you who prioritize wellness to follow your true life purpose. Study of the Vedas is like a roadmap to uncovering your best self. This is why Kerala Ayurveda Academy calls the first level of study a personal transformation. Ayurveda is a living science, which means studying it only awakens the intelligence already within you. From this place, Anything is possible. Kerala Ayurveda Academy offers an authentic education based on the root texts in convenient modern formats. Programs include all three levels of professional U.S. certification, continuing education, internship, and India immersions. Kerala is a full-spectrum Ayurvedic company with deep roots in India, offering education, wellness, and products. To learn more, visit keralaayurveda.us forward slash elements for special offers just for elements of Ayurveda listeners like you. That's keralaayurveda.us forward slash elements and you'll also find the link in the show notes. Hello and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today, I am very happy to welcome back Vedia J. Arajan Kodi Kanath, or Dr. J, as we like to call him. Dr. J is Vice President and Academy Director of Kerala Ayurveda US and is also on the Board of Directors at NAMA. We're very happy to have you back on the show, Dr. J. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Colette. Thank you. Oh, my So pleasure. happy to be here. Yes, it's wonderful. Well, today we want to talk about diabetes. It's something I haven't addressed on the show, and I'm happy we're covering this topic because right now I looked up the figures in the U.S., um, and one in 10 people, they say as of June 2020, has diabetes, and one in three people is pre-diabetic. Yeah. Those numbers are scary. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. If you really look at uh, the CDC numbers, how much money U.S. is spending on diabetes, and uh, it's uh, it's huge. Yeah. It is a global problem. You know, we now talk about COVID pandemic, the real pandemic in the health, uh, you know, aspect of uh, the entire humanity. Diabetes is uh, one of the biggest uh, health challenges the entire world is facing. Absolutely. And am I right in saying that it's not just a single disease, but a really a, a complex disorder or syndrome? Yes. 
diabetes, you know, generally people think that diabetes means increased blood sugar. Mm. So the problem is only with uh, increased blood sugar. That is a usual thinking. But, uh, you know, according to the Vedic uh, sciences, Ayurveda explains that diabetes as one of the maharogas. Maharogas are complex, chronic, difficult disorders. Mm. It can affect the whole mind-body system. So, um, and, uh, you know, diabetes, when it, when it, once it comes, it can keep on affecting different, different organ systems and uh, can cause early mortality and, uh, you know, disability, etc. Right. So this is a manifestation of a, a serious disorder in the body and a person may have got several telltale signs along the way that there's a problem. So I guess we'll start with what does Ayurveda say, have to say about diabetes? You just told us that it's considered a complex disorder. Uh, what else does Ayurveda have to say about diabetes? Sure. Um, the terminology for this disease in Ayurveda is prameha. Mm. Uh, prameha is mentioned in all Ayurvedic classical texts. As I mentioned, or as one of the Maharogas. And um, uh, explained very well about uh, its uh, pathology, how it develops and how it progresses what are the complications and uh, its management. So the Prameha, the terminology came primarily because one of the expression of diabetes is excessive urination. Mm. So, you know, excessive urination, excessive thirst, excessive hunger, these are all the cardinal expressions of uh, diabetes. And uh, Ayurveda explains that in different stages of diabetes, one is the, the accumulating stage of uh, the diabetes with more kapha predominance, more stagnation, clogging, heaviness. Then it finally transforms into a progressive degenerative condition mm. where comes the neuropathies and the nephropathy and uh, the retinopathy, the diabetes finally causing degeneration of kidneys, uh, nervous system, the eye health, and uh, finally causing, you know, uh, the mortality. Mm. So the whole process is very well explained in Ayurveda. And uh, Ayurveda also says that when it crosses a particular stage, a complete cure of diabetes will be very challenging. Mm. So the earlier we are able to identify that and uh, understand where, you know, what is the stage, it will be easier than waiting for complications. And also one of the, the real, you know, uh, interesting fact about Ayurvedic understanding of diabetes is generally, you know, the world knows diabetes when the sugar level goes beyond a limit in the blood. Mm. Correct? Yes. Whereas Ayurveda says that increased blood sugar in the blood is... 20th stage of diabetes. Mm -hmm. There are 20 stages of uh, Prameha or 20 types of Prameha in that the last phase is increased blood sugar. That means an Ayurveda practitioner can identify the tendency of diabetes much before the individual develops increased blood sugar in the blood. Mm. Even um. before that. Yeah, and I've talked before on the podcast, Dr. J, about the six stages of disease, and you mentioned aggravation and accumulation. And maybe it might be good to talk about these tendencies, these early stage tendencies. You mentioned excessive urination, excessive thirst, and hunger. Correct, correct. So, you know, what happens is, Ayurveda says, there are different reasons for diabetes mm. that could be you know what you are doing today in your life or that can even come from genetics mm. okay there are environmental reasons there are dietary reasons there are lifestyle reasons there are mental reason for diabetes and there are genetic reasons for diabetes mm. right mm. for example you know excessive eating uh, or eating a lot of heavy, sweet, cold items. You know, the entire world 
as you know, the junk food and the sodas, etc. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be really a contributor to the increased uh, uh, diabetes because heavy, sweet, cold food ingredients and um, sedentary life pattern. You know, now you know. The last few months, we have all been in front of computer, and there is no much movement. All are all are locked inside the house. So sedentary life, mm-hmm. not having enough uh, physical activity. Sleep on the daytime. Right. Sleeping on the daytime can create more sluggishness and weakness in the agni, and causing sluggishness. Stress is a, a major contributor to diabetes. Because stress means overload. That means our mind-body system is uh, getting an indication there is a crisis. Mm-hmm. And the body response to crisis is make all the, the resources available to manage the crisis. Right. So the body will pull in more sugar. Why? Because su- sugar is the easiest source of energy. Mm-hmm. So all immediate uh, uh, resources, body is going to keep and retain. So that stress itself causes, that is why diabetes or cholesterol, uh, weight gain, these are all can happen due to stress. Of course, genetics is another reason uh, for diabetes. So right. with the one or multiple of these reasons, what happens is our overall digestion and metabolism is going to slow down. Mm. The agni is going to get weak, mm. heavy food, cold food. Sweet is the heaviest taste, according to Ayurveda. Out of six tastes, sweet is the heaviest. So you are making your agni, the digestion and metabolism. You know, digestion in the gut is the gross digestion or the agni. And the metabolism comes under the subtle agni, the subtle fires within our tissues. Mm. So it weakens all these levels of agnis leading to ama. Ama is that which completely, you know, not completely transformed. So, the, you know, when you eat food, if the food is not completely transformed into usable nutrients, we can say it is in the Ama stage. Mm-hmm. If the nutrients are not completely transformed into our tissue, energy and vitality, we can say that, oh, that is in the Ama stage. Ama, the meaning of Ama is unripened, uncooked, not completely transformed. Mm-hmm. That creates sluggishness, that creates blockage, that creates stagnation. That in turn affects the first tissue called rasadhatu. That is the nutritive fluid supposed to nourish every tissue. Mm. That sluggishness and heaviness in that particular tissue get affected, you know, uh, by these factors and causes primarily the mamsa and medodhatus those two tissues getting affected. So initially, that is why the blockage and the stagnation sets in. Mm -hmm. And as we know, when there is a blockage, the flow is affected. When the flow is affected, there will be one accumulation of unutilized material within the system. Second, the tissues which need proper nourishment, you know, prana, the vital breath, or the other supports are getting deprived because there is stagnation. Mm -hmm. So if you really look at the pathology, one side there is stagnation, on the other side there is uh, depletion and degeneration. Right, right, exactly. And also going back to genetics, we were told before that, you know, we're obviously born with our genetics and there's nothing that we could do to change that. But now we understand that we can turn off and on those genes. And so the power is within our hands to determine our future and our future of health. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. The epigenetics is an mm-hmm. emerging science in the modern world. Mm-hmm. But Ayurveda is all about epigenetics. Yes. Yes. Okay. In fact, I would like to talk one day with you on entirely on Ayurveda and epigenetics. Great. Uh, I'm making it That note. will be good for the your audience to, to yes. hear because it's important because we can take charge of our health. Mm-hmm. That is epigenetics. Mm-hmm. How we can, epigenetics means our own ability to down-regulate and up-regulate our own genes mm-hmm. through the right practices, right mindset, right food right uh, lifestyle, 
we can control even though you know mom is diabetic doesn't mean that the child will be diabetic mm-hmm. right. mom and dad both are diabetic doesn't mean that the children will be diabetic but there will say increase the possibility mm-hmm. if the children also are loving that uh, gene to express definitely they will get diabetes easier than others mm-hmm. but they can control right so i always say that if you learn ayurveda then no more excuse that oh what to do my mom has diabetes exactly. or my dad has diabetes exactly. you can still take charge of your health and prevent the possibility of expression of diabetes exactly and we're going to talk about more about the management of diabetes and remedies um in a moment but before we go from this topic of how it occurs in the body um and i just wanted to note that for anybody listening who's not familiar with the uh, the datus i'm going to link to a podcast episode i did on that before wonderful and also the six stages of disease because those two are are relevant here we're not going to go into detail on in this podcast episode but i'll link to those ones but also you know you were saying about how it's the sweet the cold the heavy heavy foods a stress um and genetics and also about undigested emotions i think that would be interesting to talk about how that affects our body and in turn how can that be a factor in diabetes good question colat ayurveda says mind and body are not two separate units mm. they work together influence each other any problem affecting our physical body will affect our mind and vice versa so the undigested emotions or the the shocks and the traumas mm. of the past what happens is any trigger that could be a scene which is connected to the trauma a word that is connected to the trauma or the thought of the trauma that is another stress that is happening the incident happened 10 years ago but remembering that today is the one of the highest stress in the system mm-hmm. so that stagnating unprocessed traumas and the emotions can act as the same like uh, the ama which i mentioned before ama doesn't mean that only food undigested anything which is not processed and reconciled can be considered as an ama mm-hmm. so it that means that one incident that happened many years ago will become a repeated stressor whenever you associate with that or remember that mm. and uh, as if you are going through that now today yeah that means those those who are carrying such traumas that incident happened so many years ago is a source of stress every day for them right. and the same stress and crisis leads to metabolic slowness diabetes weight gain and i see such cases a lot in my ayurvedic practice mm. yeah it's you know it's so important and ayurveda reminds us constantly that we need to have a holistic view of our health and well-being that everything mm-hmm. affects our health and so it's not just enough to just look at your food but we need to look at the lifestyle the environment and so many factors can affect our health that's that's right i always say this you know there are people health conscious they take only organic food they get up uh, very early they sleep early they do yoga everything all then they will come when they come for a consultation i am doing everything right but still i am getting this problem why because physically managing your day to day life is one if your mind is negative if your mind is getting affected constantly whatever you know you do for your diet and lifestyle still you can have problem so managing health is not only managing physical health mm. the height and weight and the frame but managing mind really you know has a, a much bigger role to play in the overall health management you know i usually say that managing mind is managing life It's very good say so even the physical actions what we do on a day to day basis depends upon what our mind prompts mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. absolutely and i'd like to talk now dr j about um, the ayurvedic management of diabetes and how we've talked about how ayurveda looks at diabetes so let's talk a little bit about 
the manifestation of the disease you talked like that how when we get diabetes it's um you know it's a down the line in the stage of the disease and mm -hmm. how ayurveda deals with the management maybe give us a few examples of different stages if that's possible sure mm -hmm. sure definitely definitely so the first stage of the, is the stage of stagnation we can say a kapha predominant stage of the diabetes. That is what usually in, you know, type 2 diabetes that is most common. Okay. That means the acquired, gradually developed uh, uh, diabetes. So first is the stagnation, you know, the kapha, the ama. In fact, uh, if you look at the symptoms of the stagnation or ama, it's almost equivalent to aggravated kapha. Mm. Both symptoms are almost the same. So that is where the tendency of gaining weight, the, the tendency of, uh, you know, lethargy, laziness, feeling heavy and feeling dull, mm. all these things can, ha can happen during that time. And um, then when it gets into the next stage, that is where your tissue starts getting affected. Mm. Yeah. Your nerves, your your you know the that the muscle tissues and uh, other tissues can get affected. At the later part, it's a real degeneration, complete breakdown of uh, the system, and uh, there the mind can get affected. The, the you know the whole tissues can get affected. Most of uh, the diabetes cases, the premeha starts with uh, the stagnation and accumulation. And the management of each of the stages is different. Mm. And as you know, conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, cholesterol, all these come under lifestyle disorders, correct? Mm. Yes. Lifestyle disorders means the disease that can happen due to improper diet and lifestyle. At the same time, they are call, called as the lifestyle disorder because they can be helped by changing your diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which so in the right. management of diabetes, yes. So management of diabetes, always like any other disease management in Ayurveda, there is a role on the diabetic patient side. And of course, there is a role on the practitioner side. Mm -hmm. The practitioner side role is to guide them in the right way based on the stage of the diabetes, then give them the right herbs or right formulations or taking them through the right panchakarma, etc. So that is a, the clinical side of management, whereas the most important side is the self-management of health. Since it is a lifestyle disorder, what the patient does, what they eat, what they do, what they don't do, that really matters. Mm. So in Ayurvedic management of diabetes, we first focus on how they can help in managing this. Then only it comes what herbs or formulation clinical management comes. Right. So just to help uh, the audience on how, what are the tips or what are the, the guidance we can give uh, them. One is, trying to avoid all the known reasons for diabetes. For example, if they are drinking a lot of sodas. Mm -hmm. Many a time when I consult, uh, people say that, yeah, I drink soda, but no worries, I'm drinking that uh, zero yeah. uh, soda or the sugar-free. Mm -hmm. They don't know that the sugar-free is not just free from <laughs> all problems. Right. Yes. And some of the sodas you will see diet on that. Wherever we see diet means good for health. It's an automatic association. That's true. Because dieting means good for you, right? Mm -hmm. And not knowing that such sugar alternatives are much more dangerous than the real sugar. Mm. Sugar has only one problem. It is sugar. <laughs> yes. Whereas the materials like aspartame yeah. added in many of this, uh, the drinks, uh, it has much more side effects and including that affects the mind, mm -hmm. the bones, the nerves, the gut. So uh, first is about, you know, about streamlining the, the overall diet and lifestyle that really important. Mm -hmm.
it is not about depriving yourself from food. There are people, as their diabetes progresses, they reduce their food. As the pro diabetes progresses, they increase their activity because there is a thinking that, hey, if you reduce your food, you are reducing the sugar in your blood. When you increase the activity, your body is using the sugar. So mm -hmm. to maintain diabetes, you reduce your food and increase your activity. Up to a limit, it is true, but we need to, you know, ensure we, we give the guidance that hey, your food is not only for sugar. Yeah. Your food is to nourish your all tissues. Mm -hmm. For want of controlling the sugar, you cannot reduce your food too much. Mm -hmm. That means you are depriving yourself and leading to early degeneration of your entire mind-body system. Mm. So there should be a reasonable management of diet, not reduction of diet below a limit. That is one, nobody understands that. I see a lot of people depleting themselves for want of uh, controlling the sugar. So I tell them that you need to have a reasonable management of your diet. The rest, if still the sugar is more, we need to manage that sugar in a different way. You cannot deprive yourself from food for want of temporary management of glucose mm -hmm. in the blood. Second is the activity. Definitely you need to be active. But it doesn't mean that you need to overexert and deplete your own joints and nerves and muscles for want of controlling the sugar. Because your activity is not only using the sugar, your activities are using all your other tissues and systems. So you need to make sure that your activities are in a way that supports management of diabetes without depleting and degenerating your joints and tissues. Mm -hmm. So these are the two principles what uh, in Ayurveda we carry in diabetic management from the, the individual side. Then, of course, according to their constitution, according to their age, according to their work and life situation, we customize the, the overall approach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in here for a moment, because if you're listening to Dr. J talk about how diabetes is a lifestyle disorder and it's really about improper diet and lifestyle and it can really be helped with changing those factors along with self-management of health and you feel like you need support, I have a couple of offerings you may be interested in. The first one is a private online consultation with me where we can look at your current health status and then I can tailor a strategy to your lifestyle and we can look at your food, we can look at your exercise, your daily self-care practices, your mindfulness practices and put a plan in place to help keep you in balance physically and mentally. The second option is I have a daily habits for a holistic health course. This is an online self-paced 28 day course. It's actually going to be discounted for a limited time. And in this course, we will look at the circadian rhythms, the daily energy cycles and structure your day to work with these energies rather than going against them and suffering, which can lead to a lot of stress in the body. We'll also talk about understanding the different mental qualities of Sattva, Rajas and Thomas and how to keep your mind in balance with various mindfulness techniques. We'll talk about the foundation of Ayurvedic healing and how to understand the principle of opposites in Ayurveda. And we'll also talk about how to develop your intuition and the importance of the values of positivity and compassion, how they impact your health and well-being. So in this self-paced 28-day course, you get access to a private course page on my website, along with worksheets and access to a private Facebook group. And it will really provide you with a balanced foundation for your day and also your well-being. It will help establish you in your unique constitution and keep the doshas in balance to prevent disease. It helps you maintain regularity in your body clock, giving you greater energy. It will help maintain digestion, absorption, assimilation, elimination. So really creating regularity. 
This course will help bring a sense of calm to your body and mind. And also it helps promote discipline, clarity, confidence, longevity, and happiness. So if you're interested in checking out that limited time discounted self-paced course, just click on the link in the show notes or go to my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and go to the events tab. And that's where I'll have the discounted daily habits for holistic health course there. If you're interested in booking a consultation, just go to the services tab on my website or click on the link in the show notes. Okay, let's go back to the show and this great conversation with Dr. J. Whereas uh, the clinical management of diabetes, it involves different other, you know, different factors. Of course, there are uh, specific herbs and herbal combinations suggested in the management of Prameha. In Ayurveda, it's not only just managing the sugar, somehow reducing the sugar. It is all about supporting the body to utilize the sugar in a good way. Mm. The primary difference between the modern approach to diabetes and Ayurvedic approach is modern approach is directly going and reducing the sugar. Mm. That is why it can lead to hypoglycemia. That means uh, the glucose level below uh, normal. That is also another disease because glucose is the primary source of energy for every cell. You know, if uh, the glucose goes very low, that is another disease Mm. for the hypoglycemia. So the Ayurvedic approach is primarily supporting the Agni, supporting every tissue and supporting the system to regulate the reutilization of the sugar accumulated so that we are able to give a sustainable outcome. Mm. So if you really, a a broad approach in an initial stage of uh, diabetes, uh, there are herbs which are more bitter in taste, is considered as good, because bitter is a taste without heating the individual, it cuts the sliminess and clears the channels. Mm and help in reutilization of the sugar in a much better effective way. That's why if you look at uh, the guidance for diabetic people, bitter taste ingredients will be much more mentioned because that is one taste which enhances the agni and clears the channel without heating the system. Mm -hmm. In an increased sugar level, heating the system is not good because it causes more infection more dhatu pagam, degeneration of tissues. So we never suggest too much of heating spices in diabetes. Like uh, trikatu is not generally mentioned uh, for the diabetes. Whereas we use uh, the, the herbs like uh, fenugreek or Indian curry leaves or black cumin, those type of, or amalaki, mm-hmm. those type of herbs which are not hot spices. Generally, when we hear kapha, weak agni, we always think about the black peppers and the gingers and the the chili peppers, etc. Here, it is important to understand in the management of uh, diabetes, we don't use the heating spices too much because that causes tissue degeneration much faster. Rather than that, we use the the taste like bitter, Mm -hmm. which still supports the agni and clears the channel without heating the system up. That is one principle we always follow. That's great. And the bitter taste is very much lacking in our diet as well. We have a lot of the sweet taste. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Sweet and sour and salt. These three are the, the three predominant tastes in all enticing foods. Yes. The problem with the three, these three tastes are all three, these three increases the kapha mm-hmm. exactly. and uh, it creates the sliminess in the system. Mm. That sliminess in the system is the reason for reduction of agni and uh, more uh, clogging in the system. Mm. So this is one area. One is the, the bitters, uh, many of the herbs we use. Second is supporting and rejuvenating the Agni system. Agni system, when we say Agni system, our liver and our pancreas and our, you know, the organs that supports the overall digestion and metabolism will come under 
you know, that category of Agni systems. Mm -hmm. Rejuvenation of those organs, how we can make our pancreas work better, how we can make our the secretion from the pancreas, the insulin, more efficient. Mm. And um, there are very specific uh, herbs and formulations that can support in this process. So it is not about somehow reducing the blood sugar, but supporting the overall system in reutilization and balancing the sugar is the overall clinical management. So there are com comprehensive herb formulations that uh, supports the whole aspects of uh, diabetes, including prevention of the possible complications of diabetes. Then, of course, there is a whole area of Ayurvedic clinical management called Panchakarma or Shodhana Chikitsa, the purification. In uncontrolled diabetes, we wait till the diabetes stabilizes to take uh, people through the Panchakarma. Because we won't be able to do too much of oleation or uh, warm therapies when there is uncontrolled sugar level in the blood because it again causes, you know, more dhatu pagam or dhatu shaithilyam. That means degeneration of the tissues or alteration of the integrity of the tissues. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we, this is another, you know, tip I usually give to Ayurvedic professionals that don't do too much of uh, heating therapies and uh, too much of uh, you know ghee the oleation process in uncontrolled diabetes first stabilize the diabetes through the herb diet lifestyle once it is stabilized then we can take them through the purification process mm -hmm. that really helps then after the purification there are rasayanas one of the most important rasayana for diabetes is shilajit. Mm -hmm. You know, shilajit, um, you know, primary India is one source, the Himalayas. Another source now is the, the Russian source, Russian mountains. Yes. They call it as Mimio in, in Russia. How do they call it? Mimio, Mimio. Oh, okay. I haven't heard yeah. that. Yeah, Mimio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, diabetes is considered as one of the best uh, rasayana for uh, diabetes. Shilajit, and there are many, sorry, Shilajit is... is Sh sorry, Shilajit. Ones. Yes, okay. Shilajit is considered as one of the best um, rasayana uh -huh. for diabetes. Why? Because Shilajit is a rasayana which is not, uh, you know, too much of nourishing, anabolic. Mm. It keeps the channels clear. It supports the agni and it, it rejuvenates the, the organ systems. Mm. So then, you know, usually amalaki is, you know, uh, the Indian gooseberry or amalaki. Mm -hmm. And uh, turmeric is considered as the best herb combination for diabetes at all stages. And um, ancient uh, text of Ayurveda mentioned this as the Agri Aushada, means the ultimate herbal combination for diabetes. A combination of Amalaki and uh, turmeric, Haridra. Ah. Yes. So we ask uh, people to mix this, the Amalaki powder as well as the turmeric powder. Keep it mixed and um, take it every day. Okay. Every day. Yeah. So according to the stage of the disease, you can alter the ratio of uh, the turmeric and uh, amalaki. In more degenerative stages of diabetes, you need more amalaki because that is the most uh, rejuvenating, anti-aging herb available in Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. So you have more amalaki and less turmeric. In the initial stage, you have equal quantity of uh, turmeric and, um, and amalaki, mm. the inspiration. Yeah. Very good. So the amalaki is the bitter taste and the turmeric is more astringent? It is not only about the taste. Taste mm. is only one aspect of mm -hmm. it. Amalaki has all five tastes, mm. except the salty taste. Ah, it has yeah. all other tastes, five mm -hmm. tastes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But amalaki is another herb. While it has the, all the rejuvenating, strengthening property, it also helps in the subtle agnis. The Dhatu Agnis. We just talked about that. 
recent yes. podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it Very supports good. the Thatwa Guineas. Ah. Even turmeric supports in that way. Okay. It cuts the sliminess in the okay. system, okay. enhances the, the flow through the channels and supports. So that combination, uh, we call it as Nisha Malagi. Nisha, all the synonyms of night is the synonym of turmeric. You know that? Oh, no. Yes, all Sanskrit word for night, you know, night time. Yeah. That is the synonym of uh, uh, turmeric in, in Ayurveda. Oh, very interesting. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, Nisha, Nishi, Dhini, Rajani, these are all synonyms of night. These are all synonyms of turmeric. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes. So, Amalaki is the one of the main prabhava, unique therapeutic benefit of Amalaki is Vayasthavanam, that means anti-aging. Mm. It protects the system from aging and degeneration. Mm. So this is a potent combination. Then, are, then there are some other herbs which are commonly available. You use in, we use in our clinical practice. One is called uh, Jambu. Jambu is the Java plum. Mm -hmm. The Java plum is a potent herb. Guduchi. Guduchi is another potent herb that can support diabetes. Neem, hmm. black cumin, fenugreek, Indian curry leaf. All these are very supportive hmm. in overall care of uh, uh, diabetes. So the more tool we use, the better we are. Of yeah. course, we use yoga meditation especially stress related uh, diabetic issues meditation is uh, one of the wonderful tools mm -hmm. breathing yes many a time you know when i when we talk about breathing people think that hey i am breathing all the time what is a change in rhythm of breathing or change in pattern of breathing how it helps um, i usually explain them in a way that hey you want to burn the sugar more or you want to burn the fat more. You want to burn the cholesterol more. Burning means oxidation. Oxidation is possible in presence of oxygen. So through certain breathing patterns like Kapalbhati, the belly breath, mm -hmm. you are bringing more oxygen to the system that automatically facilitate better usage of the accumulated, the oxidation of the accumulated uh, sugar and other things. Mm. So that will help to maintain. Very good. It's so interesting, uh, you know, the depth of insight that Ayurveda has that, you know, they in, oftentimes in diabetes, there's excess weight, but even though there's excess tissues, these tissues are often of very poor quality. And mm -hmm. Ayurveda understands that it's a degenerative disease. So there almost has to be this resayana or this rejuvenation along with the other healing um, you know, medication or herbs and so on given. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the challenge of these conditions, the whole family of conditions, right? Diabetes, uh, obesity, cholesterol, these are all coming under the same family. Yeah. The problems, the main issue of this condition, they clog the system. Right. Clogging means you are depriving the tissue from the balanced nourishment. The tissue bulk increases, but the quality and function of the right. tissues are going to get, uh, you know, reduced. Right. right. That is where the issue is. That is where all these herbs work. Because silajit, for example, anything that clears the channel, that means making the flow normal. Mm -hmm. Making the flow normal means the, the reutilization and, uh, you know, function of every tissue will become better. So that is why the declogging as well as nourishment. Both need to happen simultaneously. Without declogging or clearing the channel, if you get you give it a cyanus, it will clog further because mm -hmm. the channels are not clear. Yeah, absolutely. And and so, yeah, even though there is this accumulation of tissues, like I said, they're really poor quality. And could you talk a little bit, Dr. J, about the fact that it is depleting in a degenerative condition and the effect it has on ojas? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ojas, you know, what is Ojas? Ojas is the vibrancy, the glow, the vitality, the immune strength that come as an outcome of properly nourished the seven tissues. Mm. 
it's the collective expression the collective vitality the collective vibrancy of all the well nourished tissues whenever uh, diseases like diabetes happens through the clogging of the system you are not nourishing uh, most of the tissues in a balanced way if the tissues are not properly nourished you don't have the contribution of optimally nourished the tissues mm. it naturally causes depletion of the ojas and what is ojas is not only the energy ojas is the overall vitality of our system to to continue the normal functions right mm-hmm. so it is not only the the overall energy but it is the the proper nourishment and strength of every tissue that is also responsible for resisting other disorders have you seen diabetic people they are prone to many other diseases yeah they are prone to infections they are prone to allergies they are prone to um inflammation mm. because this clogging and degeneration of the tissue causes depletion of the ojas that in turn causes you know your whole system is open for pathogens and other inflammations right right that is why uh even whether it is shilajit or amalaki all these herbs you can see they unclog the system mm. they re- help to rejuvenate the degenerating tissue and they enhance the ojas yeah so it's a combined effect beautiful and you know it's so important for us all to understand that it, we really need to take care and take charge of our own health and ayurveda is all about prevention of disease in mm-hmm. the first place and i think it comes down really to the awareness of your prakruti and and having the awareness of any subtle imbalances or aggravations going on in your body so that you can catch those in the early stage of imbalances before it manifests and so on um so could you talk a little bit about that and for you know give tips for people about how they can become a real um active participant in their own health and why it's important to understand um their body and mind and their tendencies of aggravation definitely colat you know as i always mention you can take charge of your health in fact you are the primary healer mm. when the digestion is within the individual metabolic system is in, the, in within the individual immune system is within the individual if all the healing mechanisms are working within the individual who is the real healer mm-hmm. the individual is the real healer the primary message is hey you can take charge of your health whether it is diabetes or obesity any problem you have a great role to play in the overall recovery don't just depend upon the medical system or the the medicine what you take mm. so the primary tips for diabetes is it's all about regulation mm. it the extreme measures will not give any sustainable outcome just doing lot of exercise and you go and check the blood sugar it is better it doesn't mean that your diabetes is managed mm-hmm. so it is not about doing extreme things and temporarily showing some instant gratification that approach will not work on conditions like diabetes being consistent and going through a medium path when i say medium path not to reduce food too much mm. not to eat too much right yeah not extremes no yeah not to do exercise too much or not to do exercise both are not good for diabetes mm-hmm. by doing too much exercise you are already the disease is depleting you you are depleting you further yeah so you know finding that fine line you do optimally you know optimal diet management optimal uh, lifestyle management exercise management that is where the real you know uh, real efficiency mm-hmm. uh to get a sustainable outcome so my usual tips to uh, diabetic uh, people one is about having a regularity a consistency in your life you know daily routine and patterns mm-hmm. everything in this nature works in cyclic rhythms mm. 
everything in our body works in cyclic rhythms cardiac rhythm respiratory rhythm digestive rhythm uh, sleep rhythm menstrual rhythm everything is rhythmic yeah there is a, a sugar cycle there is a cholesterol cycle there even our subtle physiology is working in cyclical way it is not only diabetic patients every human being when they eat food there will be an increase in the blood sugar every normal human being but when it increases in the blood body will regulate it naturally mm -hmm. so whether you are a diabetic patient or a normal individual this cyclic the cyclical uh, metabolic pattern is happening in in you on a constant basis mm -hmm. if you are able to support that circadian rhythm of cyclical utilization of the food and nutrients by the system that is one of the most important tip for those who are prone to diabetes and other metabolic disorders absolutely try to have a a rhythm of eating and a rhythm of sleeping mm -hmm. because when you eat in the right time every day in a cyclical pattern your whole body intelligence will understand the circadian rhythm that particular time when the raw material the food is going to come mm -hmm. so naturally since all your system is expecting the food in that particular time because you eat every day at the same time your digestion absorption utilization of absorbed nutrients will be seamless that itself can help to regulate all these you know including sugar uh, to a, a good extent so for the first tip is to have a rhythm of eating and sleeping mm. please avoid late nights because late night is a stress for the system for human beings daytime is for activities and nighttime is for sleep you know in this modern world people think sleep is a waste of time i can be more productive i can i can take care of a little bit more work whereas ayurveda says your sleep time is much more important for your health and longevity than your working time mm. because from the time we wake up in the morning till we sleep at night it's only wear and tear physical wear and tear mental wear and tear and sensory wear and tear the only time our mind body system repair recoup rejuvenate and balance is in the deepest state of sleep mm. that too at night time because you may sleep during day time it will give only that physical rest you may snore but still your subtle system you know when the heating stimulating sun energy in the day time will not allow your subtle system to be really at deep rest yeah so the quality of your sleep can happen only at uh, night so my second tip will be please avoid late nights because late night is a stress for the system uh accumulation of the glucose or the sugar to manage the stress is a stress response if you want to regulate your metabolism please avoid late nights mm. okay Great. and the third tip is finding a, a a a specific line of your activity do regular moderate activity rather than doing 3 hours of gym once in a week mm -hmm. do only 15 or 20 minutes every day it is like this can you eat uh, one day because you are going to be busy next week you are can you eat for a week today no you can't mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you cannot sleep for one week today or you cannot eat one week the same way you cannot do exercise today for next one week mm -hmm. so simplicity and consistency are two watch words for managing all metabolic disorders so create a pattern of breathing or yoga or exercise where you do consistently so your system regulates accordingly so that is my third tip fourth tip is incorporate appropriate ingredients in your diet that helps in three things one that which help to stabilize the digestion and metabolism that which clears the the mind body channels that which rejuvenates the tissues mm. these are the three to facilitate that some of the spices i already mentioned the most potent 
uh, home remedies or the the healing ingredients at home are turmeric ginger uh fenugreek it's a spice you know it's a bitter spice black cumin of course normal cumin coriander seed all these are very good mm. there are certain vegetables that can support especially in that the kapha stage clogging stage of diabetes they are bitter melon uh the leafy vegetables uh squashes various squashes um uh, they're all helpful mm -hmm. generally people have a tendency to avoid all grains you know yeah. this is another uh, tip that make the food more complex mm -hmm. rather than eating only fruits only vegetables or only grain go for complex meal mm -hmm. it should have enough protein healthy fat and uh, hold some grains and vegetables and everything as a because your gut different part of the gut is engaged in digesting different type of ingredients mm. by eating a complex meal you are loading the whole system in an even manner rather than you are overloading only one area by eating only one item or one type of item mm -hmm. so make it complex make it complex right. out of grains the best grain for those who are diabetes ayurveda says barley is one of the the, the very good grain mm -hmm. you that is a, a, a reductive grain okay right mm -hmm. go for unrefined items avoid direct sugars white sugar right refined especially sugar. yeah yeah the white sugar or the white flour is not a good idea the all purpose flour mm -hmm. in india we call it as maida mm. that is a, a refined flour that is not considered as great go for wholesome uh, grains like uh, the whole millets you know those type of uh, grains would be better okay so that is about the di dietary aspect avoid daytime sleep mm -hmm. daytime sleep that's two things it slows down your digestion and metabolism mm -hmm. and it causes clogging and accumulation yeah right So these are the some simple tips. Great tips. <laughs> Wonderful, really good. And you know, it's really essentially all about managing stress in the body because when we go against nature or the circadian rhythms, when we're staying yeah. up late at night, when we're overstressing our body with too much exercise, we put stress on the systems in the body. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. And so that has a detrimental effect on our health and well-being. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it really does, you know, for people out there who are new to Ayurveda, it does require at the start of the journey learning about yourself and doing that self-study and really understanding your mind-body type and and your tendencies and so on and getting really aware of those subtle signals when there is accumulation or aggravation in the body. Um but I think that's a wonderful journey to commence on, really understanding yourself and from there you know you open up into this great awareness correct correct you know you are a very unique individual every human being is a very unique individual mm -hmm. understanding oneself as you rightly mentioned what is your unique nature what is your constitution what are your tendencies your affinities mm -hmm. if you identify that and if you are able to customize uh, your life around your overall nature the chance of getting a disease is very less mm -hmm. if you unknowingly get into something your chance of recovery will be much faster yeah. so understanding oneself uh, call it that is the key according to ayurveda that is uh, the uniqueness of ayurveda yes while it is a holistic uh, science that see all nature as one you know we are a part of the integ integral part of the nature then it goes into complete personalization mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, yeah which is wonderful because then it makes decisions so easy in every aspect of your life when you understand yourself truly it makes Correct. all those decisions very simple true true yeah. whether it's what you're going to eat how you're going to exercise career mm -hmm. <laughs> everything sure yeah sure, which sure, is wonderful sure. dr j thank, thank you so that. much this was a really great conversation i feel like we had a really good chat and you gave some gave some great tips is there anything else that we didn't get to chat about in regards to diabetes before we finish up here 
you know, Colette, there are a lot of things, you know, it's an ocean, right? right. Life is so complex. Sure. So whatever we can include in each session, we can. These are the, the primary thoughts, what I have, I want to share. Great. And uh, and also, these are all educational information mm-hmm. from the Vedic sciences. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, especially I need to mention that this is not to replace any of their uh, medical, you know, yes. advice, etc. These are all education for them to go deep into and incorporate in their life. Yes, and I truly appreciate you sharing this wisdom today. And yes, I think it's a good reminder that for people who are new in this journey is getting advice from a professional is really important. Correct. Yeah. Well, Dr. Jay, can you tell us a little bit about Kerala Ayurveda Academy? And now I know that there's a lot of changes with this COVID situation. And tell us about your offerings coming up, because I get a lot of questions about of online course. studies about sure. Ayurveda. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kerala Ayurveda Academy is currently the largest Ayurvedic educational institution in the U.S. And our real focus is bringing the roots knowledge of Ayurveda directly from the ancient text to the modern world in a way which can be applied to the world. Mm-hmm. So we offer uh, certification programs approved by the, the state of California and state of Washington and also approved by the National Ayurveda Medical Association. We have Ayurvedic wellness counselor, Ayurvedic practitioner, as well as Ayurvedic doctor programs. Now the enrollments are going on. Not only that, we, you know, in this COVID situation, we transformed uh, our education into very effective online programs. So I'm just starting a new series um, uh, next Monday that is called the Vedic Formulation Series. Mm. I felt that, uh, especially on the Western side of the world, the weakness of Ayurvedic professional is the lack of real knowledge about the ancient uh, formulations. Yeah. It is available in the West, but, uh, you know, in Ayurveda, one herb or one formulation is not for one symptom. Mm. All the formulation covers the entire samprati of a disease. Mm. So I'm starting a series uh, next Monday onwards. It is called Vedic Formulation Clinical Application Series, going through the ancient uh, formulations. Uh, The criteria of selection of the formulation is available, most comprehensive, most effective formulation. Mm. So I'm going to go through the ancient text, the, the Sanskrit chanting, explaining them about the formulation, the dosage, adjuvant, where to use, in what samprapti to use, so that is a series I'm going to start. I'm really excited about Fantastic. that. Fantastic. That's of amazing. Course, mm. Ashtanga Hridayam program is going on, going through the ancient text of Ayurveda, Ashtanga Hridayam. Mm-hmm. So every Wednesday evening, that is another web series. People join from different parts of the world. Then, of course, uh, Ayurvedic assessment and pulse, pulse diagnosis workshop is coming next month. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of programs going on, call that, and we are, you know, and I would uh, strongly encourage all the audience to visit uh, keralaayurveda.us. That is our website. We provide all the information. Wonderful. Some of our certification program catalogs are 30 to 40 pages. So you'll get all the information. Wonderful. Well, and uh, up front. Well, the choice is amazing and how much it's, it's built up over the years is fantastic. And I continue to enjoy studying with you as well. So thank you so much, Dr. J, for, like I said, taking the time. I know you're very busy right now, but taking the time to chat with us today. And I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Colette. Thank you for all what you are doing, sharing this knowledge with the world. It's my, my pleasure, my pleasure. And we'll have you back soon to talk about Ayurveda and epigenetics. Of course. (laughs) Sounds great. <laughs> Look forward. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, Dr. J. Thanks again. Sure. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. What wonderful wisdom Dr. J shared with us there. I know I learned a lot. And if you think that this episode will be valuable to family or friends, please share it with them so we can get this wonderful wisdom of Ayurveda out there and can really help people. Dr. J gave some great tips there and home remedies as well. And also check out the show notes for the links that Dr. J mentioned to Kerala Ayurveda. So you can find out all those wonderful offerings there. I wanted to remind you in the show notes, you'll also find the link to my online consultations, 
where I can help you understand your true nature, your tendency, so you can catch those subtle signals of aggravation early before they manifest into any diseases. And also check out the Daily Habits for Holistic Health course, the 28-day self-paced course, which is discounted for a limited time. And that's where we talk all about the circadian rhythms and help you implement these daily self-care practices and tuning in your life to the circadian rhythms so you can maintain balance in the body and mind. So please check out the show notes for all that info. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, please do wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you'd like to leave a rating and review, I would really appreciate that. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so over on the Patreon page. I'll put that link in the show notes notes. And thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing the podcast. I truly appreciate it. I enjoy bringing it to you on a weekly basis. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well and slong Bye for now.